Hey everyone, Steve here with Class A Surfacing. Now, I've had a commenter ask a couple times, what's the difference between studio surface and through curve mesh? They give very similar results. Now, just to give you a little history, through curve mesh is an old operator. It's been there 25, 30 years, I don't know, probably since the very beginning, or near the very beginning of the software's creation. And um, 10, 12 years ago, they added uh, Studio Surface to the mix, and they do things slightly differently. Now, with uh, the initial interfaces, you'll notice if I go to Studio Surface, there are my primary curves, there are my cross curves, I have my um, continuities and um, output surface options and such. Now, if I go to through curve mesh, primary curves, cross curves, continuities, output surface options. At uh, the initial look, they both are pretty much identical. Now, when I go through the menu and I get closer to the bottom, you'll notice here uh, something that uh, through curve mesh has is you can use a spine if the first and last uh, primary sections or primary curves are planar. So if the first curve I pick for the primaries, second, and the last curve I pick, I can have intermediate, intermediate curves as well. In the last curve, I can pick a spine. I cannot do that with uh, um, the, the, the Shape Studio, or I'm sorry, the uh, Studio Surface. So uh, that's one thing that Through Curve Mesh can do. Another thing that Through Curve Mesh has is the ability, you'll notice if I go into settings, okay, I have uh, simplification, so on and so forth. This is the, basically the same as the studio surface. But above that, I have what's called output options, and I have emphasis both, or primary or cross. So with the Through Curve Mesh, if I do not have curves that are utterly perfect, ends don't touch, that type of thing, I can specify I want to uh, I want to focus on the primary and then the cross curves become more of a suggestion rather than has to touch. So um, you, you have some options there that do not exist in Studio Surface. Now if I go into the Studio Surface menu, you'll notice through here I have my alignment uh, output is you know, parameter, arc length, I can switch strings. Also with Studio Surface, I do not need to have uh, cross curves. I can pick just primary curves, as many as I want. And I can pick only one cross curve if I want. So it, um, very, very powerful. Now, uh, something else that um, is nice with this Studio Surface is because it requires less inputs. So for instance, if I pick this surface and I go to the, or that curve surface, listen to me, I go to that curve, you'll notice it dumps the surface in straight away. I can come down to guide curves and put that in as a guide curve. So you'll see I have a, um, because it's not as pick reliant uh, through curve mesh, I have to have a bounded uh, set of curves, minimum four curves in order for the preview to even come up and function. Whereas with Studio Surface, if you want to, um, I'll just restart that. I can go here for a primary. I can come down here for a cross and end up with that. And this is nice because in this regard, I can do a continuity across the first section in the first guide. So I don't have to have a bounded or two elements across from one of those. This is almost like a sweep. The difference between this and a sweep is that I can now impose my continuity across those boundaries. Okay, so Studio Surface does a lot of very powerful, interesting things. Um, the math that drives them, because one is built so long ago relative to the other, is again slightly different. You will end up with slightly different surface results. So um, as far as aesthetics go, a lot of times I start out with the Studio Surface and off of the studio surface, I take a look. Um, I'm not a big fan of using more than more curves than absolutely necessary. Meaning, with uh, like a studio surface, if I can get away with two primaries, great. I'll leave it at that. If I need a primary, a primary, and a guide, as you see here, then I'll leave it at that. Um, if, if I have to have four, then I do, then I use four. A lot of times, I'm 
uh, building a patch surface in between four boundaries. Then I use four, and and then I go with it. So uh, uh, it does that. Now here you see I, I can switch strings, and the result is different. Meaning this is now becoming my uh, primary. This is becoming my guide. So there's a lot of really useful things that you can do within um, this this tool. Now you'll notice I have options for uh, single selection, sections and guides, meaning if I pick it, it automatically moves to the next selection and so on. Now if I go into through curve mesh, you'll notice here, pick my primary, next primary, and then cross curve, next cross curve. There goes my surface. Puts it right in. Does a nice job. Builds a really clean surface. So if I look at just those bounded elements, I didn't add these internal curves in there yet. I'm just going to go into uh, analysis and I want to pick this. I want to say show poles. You'll notice it builds this surface. There's lots of poles. If I, say, if I said show knots as well, all right, so now those are my knots. If I double click on my through curve mesh, you'll see that the emphasis is on both. Construction is normal. If I said spline points, you'll notice it cleans it up. It goes right to the spline points. The splines themselves are similar in um, how complex they are. All right, so this is a, a, all of the curves, as you can see, are third degree splines that I'm using. So I can add those in and say spline points. I can use a simple and I can use templates to drive. If I use a template, it, uh, the templates will override the tolerances as well. So I can pick if I have a, a one curve that's simpler than the rest and I want to use that curve as a template, it'll simplify that shape as it goes to the more complex curve. But again, it will necessarily have to deviate off of the more complex curve. right? Um, but you'll also note that I just I don't have options here for the single select. I can't switch primaries and guides and so on and so forth. It just does not allow that. So I'm just going to go ahead and make that. I'm going to hide it and I'm going to go back into my surface, studio surface, and I'm going to make basically the same surface as I did last time. And OK, and leave everything as is. And then I'm going to go to analysis, like you, and you'll see right out the chute, it makes a very simple surface. And the reason why I got that is, is if I double click, you'll notice that the output surface options, I have alignments here. This alignment is set to parameter. Okay, so it, it wants to align those parameters. And because I have very similar type curves, right, say mass, those parameters are naturally going to align. I can go into arc length, I can go into by points. If I go to arc length, you'll see I get something a bit more complex because it's no longer aligning based off of the uh, uh, parameters of the initial curve. It is, it's just taking whatever and forcing whatever from one side to the other. Now, if I uh, switch strings, you'll see I end up with uh, basically the same type of result. If I come down here, and uh, let me go back to parameter. So you can see I have alignment methods here that I don't have inside of through curve mesh. The way I would simplify things is slightly different um, in through curve mesh. So based off of the type of inputs you're using, you may want to use one preferentially over the other um, to how, how you want to simplify things. Or again, maybe you got a lot of scan curves in and uh, like in aerospace, you know, you have a set of curves that you absolutely have to use these primaries, and then you may drive a, um, uh, a cross curve in there, a couple cross curves in there, but you want to use the primaries as the focus. You can make sure that the primaries are now used because some of the options with through, through curve mesh. Now, as you can see, if I go down into arc length, I do have the options here to rebuild. You can do auto fit. Okay, those are my sections. If I go to guide, I say auto fit. You'll see it, it does simplify it. And I can do this as well within um, my through curve mesh. So again, there are a lot of similarities. Now, um, generally speaking, I typically use Studio Surface because uh, I have more options within Studio Surface as far as sections, guides, and so on. And like I said, if I can get away with two sections or one section and one guide, and impose my curvatures or tangencies on either side, they all that all works the same. Then I do that. Um, something else 
that uh, through curved mesh will do is it'll it'll uh, go down to a point. Uh, there's I have a video I, I try to find it and link to it, but uh, um, it, you can also use a primary one of the primary sections can be a point. I don't necessarily like that, but it can be. Um, so if I go back into uh, through curved mesh, you'll notice here again output surface construction normal simple spline. So what I have as far as how the surface is built are different than what I have in uh, um, studio surface, right? So the output surface options, the other one is you got parameters, arc length, those are um, uh, things that you've seen like in the swept function, okay? Some of the other functions through curves function, those are things there that you see. These, this emphasis is unique to through curve mesh, okay? Um, and the rest of the menu are all identical. Now, the type of, again, like I said, the type of surface that it's going to generate, they're going to be very, very similar. They're not going to be too different. Um, I've noticed that if you're not really careful with the studio surface, it may create more complex surfaces. So you do have to be very cautious in how you generate your surface with it. Um, the through curve mesh, uh, will allow you to, as you can see, simplify things really quickly and easily as well. And then you have your uh, settings here to modify. Um, I think it's just the nature <clears throat> of the operator, the nature of the way Shape Studio does things mathematically internally um, because of how the math is applied, how it builds the primaries across the, the, the guide strings versus how through curve mesh builds it necessarily has to have a little more complexity if you are not careful. All right, so again, uh, using your rebuild options, using your alignment options, again, I think it's that alignment options that's that's really the big driver behind all of that. Um, you just have to be be careful. I hope that helps. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly big subject, really looking internally to the surface, the surface complexity. I have a video about internal surface complexities and uh, things that can happen based off of that as well. I mean, this is just big, big subjects that uh, I cover in classes because it takes a long time to really cover it. Um, some people really like that level of detail. Um, it's And in some cases, it's important that you understand that level of detail because uh, when you're building, especially your big primaries and even your secondaries, you want to try to keep things as simple as possible. Um, anyway, I hope that helps. Um, like I said, I typically use um, Studio Surface um, over Through Curve Mesh. To me, Through Curve Mesh is the big hammer that uh, you may need to use in order to drive a shape uh, because of some of the output surface options over the, uh, um, the Studio Surface. But they're both great tools. So um, um, I guess happy modeling at that point. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please like, subscribe to my channel, and share with your friends. And uh, see you soon.